Let's do it. Well, I think it's going to fit. <laughs> Also, I would like to thank the parents uh, of the parents who uh, provided all the. The parents who provided the refreshments outside, and I. I, I just a minute, let's find out who they were. Um, France. Where are they from? Quantler? Vina Petrifia. Oh, Vina Petrie, yes, I met her out there, kind of running the show out there. Vina, are you in the room? And, oh, she's probably out there working, cleaning up, doing something. Okay, yeah, and her son, Matt. Oh, okay. So, uh, I mean, these were from Quantlin Park. My parents from Quantlin Park. Yes, who are very familiar with Bob. Okay, well, that's great. So, a big hand to those parents that helped with the refreshments. And students. And who, put, who put the slideshow together? Oh, Frank Hurt student. Wow. Okay, so thank you very much for that. It was a terrific show. <laughs> trying to fill his shirt out of shoes. <laughs> Thank you, Helen. <laughs> While the jazz band is getting uh, chairs and reeds and all that kind of stuff, I've got a couple of things that I'm, I'm very privileged to say. My name is Dave Fullerton, and uh, <laughs> Bob and I go back a very, very long ways, uh, right back to university. And um, I was just thinking as the evening went on and Kurt was reminiscing with so many different things, it was uh, Kurt's phone call, uh, and then it was a chat with Bob Labonte that uh, enticed me to, to come to Surrey, and I've been teaching here for a lot of years now, very, very happily. And, uh, but Bob and I go back, and Bob and I go back a long ways. We met at UBC some 40 years ago now, and I followed the same career path as he, though a year behind. Back then, Bob was very focused on where he was going and knew. And he, and he knew um, uh, where we were all going, we would have to deal with jazz education. Few of us had had any exposure at that point. He decided to get some experience for himself and for all of us and formed a music education jazz band, the first one. While the rest of us were doing reading and writing papers, Bob was a university student and he was on the hunt for players. Not sure why he came after me. I, I was a very average trumpet player at best and not particularly focused on music education, but he kept after me. And in what we who are here tonight know was typical, where Bob Levante was concerned, his excitement became our excitement, and he promised great parties. <laughs> so I joined him. We had a great time, and we became friends. Uh, we proudly called ourselves Raw Sewage. Yeah. And we played all the latest jazz from Chicago, Blood, Sweat, and Tears. It wasn't really a jazz group, but we, we were getting going. Bob, our director, was talented, experienced, inclusive, fun, reliable, and above all else, Bob was our friend, and a very good friend to all of us. Even after all these years, there were members of Raw Sewage at the service in August. Bob was a year older than me and headed out first into the world of music education. It was like he was the soldier who first saw action I remember well when our PDP professor announced to us that Bob Levante had contacted him and wanted to bring his students out to UBC from West Wally Junior Secondary to perform for our class. Who's here? It's from way back at the beginning at West Wally. We got a few people? Yes. Did you come out that day? 
It caused quite a stir. We had all graduated from high school at least half a decade before, and though we were each heading out to teach in less than a year, it was early in the term and most of us hadn't even done a practicum yet. We were as yet untested. Bob was our very own, our very own Lazarus, returning from the other world. <laughs> the day came and inbounded Bob and his kids. They played and they sang and we watched and we listened. 39 years ago now, and what I can remember so vividly was the look on Bob's face as he turned to us after each selection. The look of enthusiasm, yes, but most of all, the look of pride. He loved those kids and they loved him. Had he produced a world beater in just a few months? Perhaps not. But the look on his face told us more than the music ever could. And the look on the faces of his students. Bob was like that for his students for the next four decades that followed. It warms my heart to see so many of them here tonight and to get a chance to meet them and to play with them. Curtis talked about Bob's career and, and we could listen all night to, to, to his body of work and his contributions to our professions and I won't repeat them, except that whenever I talked to Bob about what he was doing all through the years, I was always so amazed at all the things he would do for his students in a year. Band camps, clinicians, festivals, tours, on and on. And he was doing things for his colleagues as well. And running a jazz festival, the largest regional of its kind in Canada. I thought I was a busy band teacher, but Bob was simply amazing. And each time we talked about those things he was doing, I could see that same young teacher I remembered so well from his first year of teaching. Excited, optimistic, positive about every facet of what he was doing. Bob has been a colleague, a mentor, and a friend to me for four decades, both professionally and personally, with life's up and downs, and we both had our share of them. I saw Bob's counsel on more occasions than I can even count. He was always there for me with valuable, positive advice, and I'm sure this room is full of people that could say the same thing. Bob's life was one of giving, and he gave, us, gave to us in so many, many ways. I know that everyone in this room understands we have lost a bright light in this world. We miss him in so many ways. The celebration of my old friend's life will always be in our hearts. So, I'm sure Bob is listening, so let's play him some jazz. <laughs> <laughs> 